Welcome back to Winging It Goes Pink. Breast cancer is the most common cancer in women besides skin cancer, but women are not the only people at risk for this disease. Breast cancer is about 100 times less common in men than in women, but it does occur with a risk rate of about one in 1,000 men. Today we're joined right now with one of the men here in Western New York that can call himself a breast cancer survivor. That's Jerry Glose. Thanks for being here today. You're joined today by Liz Kahn, the executive director of Susan G. Coleman here in Western New York, and you're here together because Jerry, you were just the keynote speaker at the Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Survivor, Survivor Luncheon. Luncheon. You were yes. telling me about what that experience was like. Uh, can you sum it up for us? Oh, it was a great experience. Over 700 people, 400 breast cancer survivors there. Uh, it is a celebration for all of the advances that have been made in curing breast cancer. And, and obviously, all those people were very happy to be there. It, must, it sounds like a beautiful <clears throat> celebration, and you were the keynote speaker. What kinds of things did you say to the crowd? Well, I told them a little bit about my story, uh, which uh, there I am sitting in the doctor's office waiting for the results of a biopsy from a little lump I had removed, thought it was a calcium deposit from a basketball game or something. And the uh, doctor walks in, he looks at me, and he says, you have breast cancer. Who are you talking to? You can't be talking to me. My name is Jerry. It's a <laughs> common female name as well. They must have screwed. You have breast cancer. And that was 15 years ago. That was before the work of Susan G. Coleman and other yes. breast cancer <clears throat> societies had, had really done so much to make us so aware of this disease. What did you think? <laughs> I was... Uh, I thought, what the heck is this? And I called my brother, who's an attorney, and my wife, uh, because I figured I had to get my affairs in order. I was a goner. And we met at the house, and after a group hug and a group cry, we, what is this breast cancer? What is male breast cancer? And long story short, we made phone calls and everything. Next day, my wife and I ended up at Roswell and uh, got a much more comprehensive explanation of what it was uh, and then got a uh, because the first time they didn't get it all I had to had a mod modified radical mastectomy and then because I had waited so long uh, six months of chemo and six weeks of radiation and it was it was a journey uh, I was bummed there's no doubt about it and after about a week of pity parties, I said, wait a minute, Jerry, why Why don't you ask the other side? Well, you're always saying, why me? This isn't fair. Uh, why don't you ask the other side? Why did I have 50 great years uh, of life and great parents and friends and career and all that stuff? And once, once I figured that out, then it was, okay, come on. What do I have to do to beat this And you're cancer-free today. You work with other males in here in Western New York that are diagnosed with breast cancer. Liz, why do you think it's important for people like Jerry to show all of the different faces of people that are affected by this? Well, Jerry gives people hope. He's such a great spokesperson for Susan G. Komen in Western New York. And, and it's really important that he, he goes out and he teaches the lesson about early detection, how important it is yes. to know your body, to get to the doctor, to get screened, to know your family history. And, uh, and he just does a wonderful job with that. And he does inspire all of us. And he's been a volunteer for Komen for since its beginning. And so, one of the yeah. questions I asked you, each of you in the green room this morning was what kind of resources do you have for male breast cancer patients? And you each said they're the same. It, it's the same thing. So you, you can benefit the same way. Yes, there's such a small minority of men that they don't do the research. But what they do know or think, and I'm living proof, is that what works for women works for men as well. And we have resources for men that we hand out at all of our educational opportunities that we have in the community. And what would each of you like people to know? This is the, our last segment, our last day of Winging It Goes Pink Week. We're nearing the end of October. As people you know, move on to November and move on to think about other things, what would, how would you like to wrap that up? Well, there's amazing work going on in this field. There's still great need, though. Uh, we all know someone who's been touched by breast cancer. 
And uh, in Western New York, Susan G. Komen is working with local programs. We fund local programs that educate women, that help women financially with transportation to treatment, transportation to screenings. And we do a lot of outreach in the community. We're very local. 75% of all the money we raise here stays in Western New York and, and funds these programs. The other 25% research. And the research, a lot of it is being done being done in Buffalo at the University and at Roswell Park Cancer Institute, so we're very local. And what about you, Jerry? Well, it's, it's just a great opportunity. I would say get involved. Be aware. Get involved. Um, I, have, I retired a few years ago, and I, as such, I have the opportunity to volunteer for a lot of different organizations, and without question, the Susan G. Komen Breast Cancer Foundation is the best. It's the most rewarding because everybody is there for an emotional reason. And, and it's not, hey, I need a volunteer for this. People don't look down. I'll do it. Uh, I'll, uh, I'll get four more people to do it. You know, it's just a great, so get involved is my message. All right. Thanks so much, Jerry and Liz, for, here, for being here today to wrap up Looking It Goes Pink Week here in the studio. We really appreciate your time and your stories. Thank you.